pessoas, tudo bom? Vamos continuar na história aqui. Vamos lá. Era nova? Provavelmente, né? Looks like a lot of other visitors have also come to catch a glimpse of the sky splitter. What's up, Mr. Jaucho? No, it's nothing. Ele cheirou. Ele cafungou. Do you see that airship in the distance? That's the sky splitter, the venue for the war dance ceremony. It doesn't look all that impressive from this distance. The Sky Splitter is actually a decommissioned Lafu military vessel. People aren't allowed on board until the war dance officially commences. Tomorrow, when the bell rings and the ceremonial cannons roar, I'll be there representing the Cloud Knights of the Sianjo Lafu, standing in the ring, ready to take on challengers from all over the cosmos since i was a kid i've been training in swordplay and the art of war under the general every day i'd swing my sword 10,000 times and then thrust it 10,000 times repeating the process over and over i understand that i'm not like other kids i never envied the toys and freedom they all had I never found sword practice boring or hard. Even in the thick of battle, facing down savage abominations, I never felt scared. Each day, I could feel myself getting stronger and stronger, and I racked up countless victories. It's the best feeling in the world. But then, I faced a really tough opponent, and just one slash shattered my confidence into a thousand pieces. That's when I felt true fear for the first time. Maybe that's what Mr. Zhao Cho meant by life and death hinge on a singular moment. Every idea fades into nothingness. After that, I had to pick up the pieces and try to put myself back together but no matter how hard i tried i couldn't seem to find my old happy self again i often ask myself why do i wield my sword if defeat is inevitable why do i continue to fight is it to reclaim the joy of victory to meet the general's expectations or to secure my honor among the Cloud Knights. And while the General could teach me the art of swordplay, he couldn't teach me why I should keep on going. He said, the reason must come from within myself. I've been struggling to find that reason. But after talking with you, Mr. Zhao Cho, I think I already have that reason in mind. As a member of the Cloud Knights, and the General's apprentice, I've had a weight on my shoulders. And I know there's still more to shoulder. But when I wield my sword, it feels like I'm letting go of everything. I love the feeling of giving it my all, facing any obstacle in front of me, pressing forward. That's why I wield my sword. Oh, Yenqing. So young, yet so grown up. By the way, how old are you exactly? Age doesn't really matter. All sword masters will understand how I feel. Hmm. I get it. Looks like all the kids on the Lafu live tough lives. So. How about you, Miss Yunli? It's not polite to ask a girl her age, no matter which Sianjo ship you're on. I'm not asking your age. I'm asking if you have a dream like Yan Ching has. You don't 
talk like a cook. You sound more like a TV host or something. <laughs> <laughs> Need I repeat myself again? I'm a healer. Well, I... I don't have a dream like Yan Ching does. The only reason I'm participating in the Ringmaster's Challenge is because I made a promise to my grandfather that I'd win the precious sword he's contributed to the war dance. Sounds like that mind of yours is just filled with swords. <laughs> I bet you've got nothing better on your mind. My father was a craftsman on the Sienjo Juming. Because of his foolishness, many innocent people fell victim to the cursed swords he forged. Since I was a kid, it's been clear to me that not everyone deserves to have a weapon in their hands. Giving them a sword is no different than being cruel to the innocent. So, whenever I come across someone unworthy of a sword, I can't help but want to take it away from them. Given that Yen Qing is the war dance ringmaster, I'm stepping up to challenge him. To ensure the precious sword doesn't fall into the hands of an unworthy master. Hey, what do you mean by an unworthy master? <sighs> I see. It's not easy for kids on the Ju Ming either. Well, it's better to have a reason for wielding a sword than to be lost and confused. I've saved countless Cloud Knights in my life, and there are plenty of exceptional warriors, just like the two of you. What happened, Mr. Zhao Cho? Oh, oh, nothing. I was just reminded of some old friends. Ele é estranho, mas ele é gente fina, né, pelo jeito. É um cara sereno que sofreu muito com a guerra, né? Your energies flow like raging fires and mighty gales. The upcoming fight will definitely be impressive. Well, we've seen the sky splitter and toured the stargazer Navalia. I guess it's time to say goodbye for now. What? You're leaving already? But you haven't asked me about my dreams. I've been working hard too, you know. It's getting late, Miss March. Unlike you lot, I'm a grown-up bound by responsibilities and duties. The tasks entrusted to me by the general won't complete themselves. By the way, Yen Qing, is it normal to have so many people wandering around in an automated area like the Stargazer Navalia? Actually, this is a restricted area. But since you're all guests, I made an exception, so you can take a look around. I understand. Well, I'll take my leave. I wish you both the best of luck in the ring tomorrow. Uh, seriously? I just spent so much time thinking about my dream, but he didn't even ask me. Pennington. <laughs> Now that we're done with our tour of the Sky Splitter, shall we continue with our training? Why don't we take a day off? What? You want to secretly practice swordplay by yourself? Dream on. <sighs> you know cramming before a fight never works out. For some reason, seeing the Sky Splitter has boosted my confidence. So... I've decided to conserve my strength for tomorrow. All right, I'll take you out of the Stargazer Navalia. Ah, Marso Soria, obrigado porque eu não me dei a minha ainda. Agora que eu vou ter que buildar a Marso aqui porque, né? Vai precisar. Oh, just shut up, Red Fang. This is not a beast ship. I need some time to take care of things. You willingly donned the skin of a lowly beast to join this mission, dedicating yourself to our glorious cause. And now you're telling me you can't handle it? Do you 
realize how many ships we need? I'm doing my best, all right? It takes time to figure all this out. When the guns go off tomorrow, all eyes will be on it. That'll be our only chance. How's us? Who's there? Guys. An impromptu inspection. Why are there outsiders loitering in Stargazer Navalia? And uh, a bunch of kids at that. <laughs> hey, kids. Didn't your parents ever tell you to stay away from the Stargazer Navalia? I know it's an automated facility, but it doesn't mean you can just break in and do what you want. Well, I'm an adult. Second, I didn't just break in. Yeah, we flew here on a star skip. Like, whoosh! <laughs> well, I'm not trying to tell you off. But this place is off limits to the public, you know? Uh, big sis, let's go. <laughs> I, I want to play in ever hunt planes. Hunt planes? Uh, uh, yeah, sure. A big sis will take you there. Eles estão todos com roupa de chanzona, né? então os caras não suspeitam. Shuha, you should have let me. Shh, the overhaul is done and everything looks good. We should leave. Suspeito. Could you repeat what you just said, Yenching? What did I say? Big sis, let's go. I want to play in everyone planes. Uh, come on, can't you read the room? Something is definitely off about the three people we just met. Yeah, anyone could see that. <laughs> I just wanted to hear you say it again. That pink-haired fox tried to say something. I'm pretty sure he sent something fishy. Since he's not familiar with this place, he just dropped us a hint. But you didn't seem to be paying attention at all. I knew that from the beginning. O guri, ela tem... That cloud knight didn't recognize Master Yen Ching at all. That's really weird. A química dos dois funciona muito bem, velho. É esquisito. Não só o Cloud Knights, o Jumei, que todos conhecem o meu nome glorioso, podem reconhecer a minha face. Você tem um ponto. O Cloud Knight, um membro da Skyfaring Comissão e um craftsman. Eles são de vários departamentos diferentes. E a razão para o overhaul parece legítima. Mas um deles blurted out some weird language just now. Did you hear that? I have a feeling that if we secretly tail them, we'll definitely catch these guys in the act. Follow my lead and be careful not to blow our cover. Porra, podia ter uma gameplay stealth, hein? Lá Metal Gear agora, hein? We should have just killed those lowly beasts. Those little brats won't take up much space. There are boxes all over this place. Just dump them into one and no one will notice. Cut the theatrics, Gulak. Corajoso, hein? Slightest slip up. Dá mais sem saber o naipe dos três ali, né? Mais fraquinho ali tem a espada gigante que te atropela, mas o que? Check the freight skiffs. We've got a lot of preparations to do. Also, don't forget to take those crates with you. Weapons, supplies. We've got to be well prepared. Otherwise, we're screwed. So, are they smugglers? What exactly are they up to? I have no clue. 
They seem to be moving those crates. I've got an idea. We can hide inside the crates and follow them. Let's just put the cargo here for now, all right? Then we'll move on to inspect the ships. Lord Mokhtok said that as soon as we're done, we're to board the freight skiff and leave this place. Don't worry, I've changed the shipping schedule. You two, come with me. Is it just me? I keep smelling that stench of lowly beasts everywhere we go. Don't be so paranoid. Looks like they're planning to escape on the skiffs in Stargazer Navalia. They keep talking about their plans, but where did they come from? And what do they want to do on the Sienjo? Uh, they're definitely up to something bad. Wait, uh, they disappeared! Uh, let's catch up to them! Tread softly. Breathe quietly. And make sure to keep an eye on them. Hide out of sight soon as there's any sign of activity. <gasps> Did he spot us? Quickly, hide! I knew it looks like the... Why are they coming? Looks like they're planning... They keep talking about... Uh, they're definitely... A... Aquela hora não era pra ele ter me visto, né? Don't be so paranoid. We're running out of time. Get over here. Shuhart, I'm coming. Shuhart, o nome do cara. They're leaving. We should catch up to them. Quickly. uniforms, but I'm pretty sure they're not members of the Skyfaring Commission, the Artisanship Commission, or the Cloud Knights. This is way too suspicious. Uh, never mind who they are. Let's just film them. That way, if they do anything bad, we'll have solid evidence against them. Eu acho, eu acho que o Zé Raposa lá sabia da conspiração. Eu acho que o Zé Raposo sabia da conspiração e levou ele lá de propósito. Um freight star skiff com enough room para fit at least 20 of my men. Eu vou deixar os outros saber e deixar eles preparar mais star skiffs. Uma vez que nós passamos o checkpoint, haverá beast ships waiting for us. Lord Mokhtok está ready. O revival da nossa ancient bloodline. All hinges on this operação. What did he just say? Beast ships? <gasps> Who's there? It's those brats! I told you to get rid of them, but you didn't listen, you idiot! Wipe them all out! 
É os doguinhos. Doguinho. Ai, mexer na voz do Rabin, cara. Oh, meu. Mexer nela, é, nela é, na Rorô também, né? Eu não tinha reparado, hein? Se ele tem fraqueza de dois elementos, você causa duas vezes, ó. Da hora. Cara, mudar a voz da Rorô -Ho e do Rabin, dos dois. Por que não sei? How is this possible? How did these Boxians change their appearances like that? They're not Boxians at all. They revealed their true form. They're Borison, just like the bandits I defeated on the IPC ship. Wait, that means. Well, how did the Borison manage to infiltrate the Sienjo? It's not just a simple disguise of wearing our clothing and shaving their whiskers. They're somehow <laughs> able to alter their appearance to be indistinguishable from Foxians. They even have official IDs for the Skyfaring Commission, the Artisanship Commission, and. and. Even the Cloud Knights? Let me check this fake Cloud Knights tag. Maybe it'll give us some clues. Lujun, an officer of the patrol defense squad? Ah, wait! What's the matter? I encountered a patrol officer named Lujun before. It was a few weeks ago when we were transporting the Borison prisoners. They can forge official identities and move around the Sienjo without raising suspicion. Oh no, this is bad. Uh, even worse, if you find one cockroach on the express, it usually means... There are more Boris in hiding on the Sienjo. I bet their clan is much bigger than just stealing information. We've got to report this to the seat of divine foresight. Oh, my. Sanjo tem um problema sério com, com invasores, né, velho? É a segunda vez que tem um invasor disfarçado na, na nave, cara. Na, na verdade é a terceira, né? Porque o Lu, o, Lu, o Luotia, ele era, né? Também. Vamos lá. Depois eu vejo isso. Vamos continuar a história aqui para não perder o fio da meada. Oi, Feixal, sua linda. Ai, ah, sinto falta da sua caldinha, mas tudo bem. Eu He's the reincarnation of Invibator Lune, and the person behind him is the newest member of the crew. I've heard a lot about you. Outside the reports from the Law Fu, the Skyfaring Commission of the Yaoxing has also gathered plenty of information about both of you. I've been eager to meet you face to face for reasons that I'm sure General Jing Yuan has explained, right? That's right. But don't worry. This isn't a trial. 
I just want to have a chat with you and get a better understanding of the facts. According to General Jing Yuan's report, the Ruin Legion is to blame for the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis, and all Arbiter Generals should pay attention to the Ruin Author's movements. Over the years, the Destruction's minions have wreaked havoc on countless worlds, and the Alliance has been keeping an eye on them. But no one expected them to join hands with the remnants of the Abundance. The damage caused by the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis was far less severe than expected, which is good news for us. However, it was quite different from the Ruin Legion's usual style of destroying life wherever they go. While I trust the bravery of the Divine Foresight and the Nameless, I'm curious about some details missing from the report. I'd like to take this chance to have an exchange with both of you. Let me be clear, the questions I'll ask might not reflect my actual thoughts, so please don't take offense if any of my questions seem a bit harsh. Please go ahead, General. But keep in mind we can only answer based on what we know. And perhaps you already have the answers to your questions in your heart. <laughs> you have a clever tongue. I like it. Ela falou que tem uma língua afiada, né? So Merlin's claw is quite articulate. Right now, her intentions are unknown, and Jing Yuan wants us to be honest. Maybe I'll just stick to the facts we know. Let's cut to the chase. Before the crisis struck, the Astral Express was guided here by a Stellaron hunter, a wanted felon, in an attempt to resolve the Stellaron crisis. However, everyone in the cosmos knows of the Stellaron Hunter's reputation. So, why did you place so much trust in them? Could it be that some of you have a connection with them? I can't remember for you. has it that Elio, the leader of the Celeron Hunters, possesses the power to see into the future. He foresaw that the Sienjo and the Express would have important roles to play in the war against Nanook. That's why we were lured here to the Law Fu, to deal with the Celeron crisis and fulfill the prophecy. General Jing Yuan believes in this prophecy too, as mentioned in the report. I'm curious why you didn't question it at all. Could it be because one of the Stellaron hunters is actually an old acquaintance of General Jing Yuan? <sighs> Please be cautious with your words, Merlin's Claw. Let's avoid sowing doubt among our comrades. I'm simply bringing up the doubts about General Jing Yuan that exist within the Alliance. Since I'm representing them, Perhaps you can just imagine me as one of those old geezers. Let's move on to the next question. The report suggests that Don Shu, the master of the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus, colluded with the Lord Ravager and used the power of the Stellaron to resurrect the Ambrosial Arbor. But here's the thing. Don Shu was just a chief alchemist. Even if she colluded with our enemies and summoned the Stellaron, how did she manage to bypass the Vidyatara guards around the Ambrosial Arbor? Ixi, e agora? Qual das duas respostas que é? I personally met Don Xu once. Her closest friend was killed during the war on the Fang Hu, and she harbored deep hatred towards the hunt. So she spent years making preparations in the Alchemy Commission in order to take revenge on the Xianzhou. Revenge is also a form of the hunt. However, 
That doesn't explain how she managed to bring the Stellaron into the Scale Gorge waterscape, which was guarded by the Vidyadara. Well, you should ask Don Shu herself for the answer. Unfortunately, Don Shu is dead, and even her corpse has crumbled into ash. That's one less clue we can pursue. According to the report, Lord Ravager Fantilia is the mastermind behind the entire conspiracy. She disguised herself as an amicassador of the Sky Faring Commission and traveled with you, only to vanish without a trace later on. It seems too convenient to label her as a scapegoat. Polícia está rodada, dobre o resultado está rodada né? hum. Fantilia is one of the Heliobi, the energy life forms that once fought against the Sienjo. They're known for their unpredictable and elusive nature. Just as she said, when the Ambrosial Arbor resurrected, its roots broke through the creation furnace on the lawful, accidentally releasing the Heliobus fiend fire sealed inside. This can be used as circumstantial evidence. If Elder Huai Yen accepts the explanation, so do I. Consegui. Ush. Cara, well, dá atenção esse, esse gameplay aqui, pô. have addressed all my questions. Generals, I am finished with my questioning. So, what do you think, General Fei Shao? Have the doubts in the report been cleared up? <sighs> the two nameless have been honest in their answers. Even though there are some tricky details, my intuition tells me there is nothing wrong. However, the three questions I posed earlier were not just for the nameless, but for you too, General Jun Yuan. First, the disciples of Sanctus Medicus grew uninterrupted on the Law Fu, yet the six charioteers were not aware of it. That was a dereliction of duty. Second, you believed in the Stellaron Hunter's prophecy and entrusted outsiders to solve the crisis, even granting them access to the Plague Mark. That was a dereliction of responsibility. Third, you insist on holding the war dance right after the Ambrosial Arbor crisis, putting the Lawfu back in the spotlight. That is a dereliction of wisdom. Merlin's Claw. Is this your line of thinking, or the Ten Lords? From the moment I walked in, I made it clear that the questions I'd ask might not reflect my actual thoughts. <sighs> the disciples of Sanctus Medicus were deeply rooted, and had been plotting for a long time. I admit it was my negligence for not noticing it earlier. As for the Stellaron Hunter's prophecy, I didn't believe all of it. But in the end, the Law Fu did survive the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis. So, I think it's safe to say that Elio's prophecy about the future holds some merit. And as for the war dance, do you think I'm unaware of the risks? However, risks can also be opportunities. The Law Fu has lain low for too long. I believe it's time to stir up the dregs hidden in the depths and wash them away once and for all. <laughs> Just as I expected from our sophisticated divine foresight, you have a way with words. I like it. But, unfortunately, ever since the report was submitted, the Alliance has been filled with rumors and speculation. Even within the Law Fu, there are people accusing you of neglecting your duties, resulting in the Ambrosial Arbor's resurrection. So what are your thoughts on all of this, General Fei Shao? As a fellow Arbiter General, I fully understand the difficulties of this position. Personally, I think all these rumors are meaningless drivel. Across the sea of stars, the divine foresight knows better than anyone else what happened on the Lawfu and the meaning behind it. 
just as what happened on the Xianzhou Yao Qing recently. You mean the Xianzhou Yao Qing is also. The scouts of the Verdant Knights have sent back reports that Borison are making trouble again. The Borison packs that were once divided and scattered have started swallowing each other up, forming larger and larger packs. Moreover, there's an entity named Mongus behind it all. You mongus. Entity? According to the report, this entity isn't actually a Borison. It's a woman claiming to be the messenger of the Master of Immortality. She's described as having 12 faces and 12 pairs of fangs, as cruel as poison and as elusive as quicksand. The Borison believe she'll give them a chance to rise again. <sighs> That's Fentilia. That's right. You're lucky that I'm the one who came this time. If it were the Patina Justice or the Seer Strategists, this conversation might not be so friendly. I've always had faith in my instincts, so I don't doubt your good intentions. But the Alliance has its fair share of questions and doubts about the Law Fu. So, my plan is to come up with an acceptable answer to satisfy the Alliance. What's in this plan, General Fei Xiao? General Jing Yuan, you already know what has to be done. But since you don't want to be the bad guy, I'll take care of it for you. You need the final word from the Ten Lords Commission to quell any doubts. And for that, I'll have to ask the two Nameless to visit the Shackling Prison. No, I'm not imprisoning you. While you're there, I'll ask a judge in the Ten Lords Commission's interrogation division to record a detailed testimony with the karmic mirror from both of you. We'll fill in the gaps that weren't covered in the report and silence any protests within the Alliance. I'm okay with that. Your willingness to help is truly heartwarming, youngsters. Then, as the Merlin's Claw requests, Oh, there's one more thing. This testimony is for silencing the voices of opposition within the Alliance, but I would like to urge General Jing Yuan to listen to the pleas of the Foxians on the Xianzhou Yao Qing. So, you are here for Hu Lei. Exactly. Hu Lei is locked up in the Law Fu's shackling prison. Since he is the broodlord of the Borisen, I want to transfer him onto the Xianzhou Yao Qing and imprison him there. The recent movement Senhor da Ninhada, será que esse bicho é um whale? Something big, so we must act preemptively. It makes sense to have the Foxians keep an eye on their arch nemesis. Since you trust my judgment, I'll repay that trust. What do you think about all this, General Huayan? <laughs> I was worried this would turn into a heated argument, but it seems like both of you are on the same page, solving each other's problems. I couldn't have asked for a better outcome. And as for Hule, I'll send my lieutenants Zhao Cho and Moza to check on his condition in prison and ready him for transport. If there are no more questions, shall we get this started? Beleza, gente, eu vou encerrar o episódio por aqui, porque já estamos aí com 40 minutos de vídeo. Falou, valeu, até mais, fui!